Yeah, if there was a company that had an app where I could log in and a doctor would change my eye color for that weekend or maybe my hair color or I would tell them, you know, I don't really want to go to the tanning booth, but I want to be a little bit more tan for this next trip. I'm going to Greece and I want to, you know, show out. I want my abs to, to pop a little bit. I, I imagine after the the health component of being able to change specific letters of DNA and, and DNA as a whole, that fashion is going to come very quickly because people care about how they look and people want to look good. And mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know if I'm more excited or scared of a, a market like that because of the implications of, you know, what, what becomes you then what I, it, yeah. I, I'm my eye color. Like that's how I've always seen it. I'm, you know, more or less my skin tone, uh, within, you know, plus or minus a few shades and I'm my hair color. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, if I can change all that, then what, like, what, what is the essence of the physical me? Yeah. And I would argue that we've already done that. And that's what's so interesting about this is we just, technology changes how we relate to ourselves and also how we relate to the world and also how we relate to ethics. There's actually a great book by Juan Enriquez called how, how technology transforms our ethics. And it talks about how as technology advances, our sense of what is ethical and correct changes with that technology. And, um, you know, when we think about, I think a lot of people would have this kind of very natural anxiety or fear. And what does the future look like when I can just change my genes and, and look and like be different than I was, you know, quote unquote, naturally born. But, you know, yeah. people are doing this all the time. People are getting nose jobs and boobs got boob jobs and they're dyeing their hair like we're talking about. And they're, you know, getting liposuction and, and, um, doing all kinds of things wearing makeup, you know, even something as simple as wearing makeup, like my eyebrows were not this dark this morning. I put on pencil. And so that's an alteration. Yeah. And, um, and it's just a, it's, it, it certainly feels more permanent because it's genes. It's not, you know, a dye. I'm just but sitting then, here with my know, barely. Nose job's pretty permanent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm just sitting here with my barely visible blonde eyebrows, but soon enough I can uh, change that from an app. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it, it might be a stretch, but it, it, it makes me think of, steroids in baseball because it, it was such a mm. huge topic especially back in the early mid 2000s when I was I just started getting interested in baseball as, as something that I could pursue uh after high school and possibly as a, a career which didn't end up working out but I I heard a bunch of different arguments that were for or against steroids and the word natural mm -hmm. always came up and mm -hmm. the more I think about it the more the natural argument for me didn't hold up there are other moral reasons and uh, health reasons to take steroids or to not take steroids I'm not advocating for anything obviously but if you have someone who a guy like me, let's say I produce a natural level of testosterone and then there's another guy to my right who produces 30% more testosterone, but it's also natural. The word natural mm -hmm. doesn't mean the same thing. And so if you could mm -hmm. alter your body in a safe way under the guidance of doctors and, and people that mm -hmm. know what they're doing, then yeah. aside from making people uncomfortable, what is the argument against it, it, it what, what is the argument for being natural I, I don't hold being natural as highly I don't I don't put that you know state on a pedestal because I'm doing things all the time to rise above my natural state I'm drinking caffeine right now to uh, be alert for a podcast I'm working out to change my body I'm, I'm doing all these mm -hmm. things to try to put myself in the state that I want to be in and steroids is a very extreme example of that but it, it's they're both unnatural ways to go about life. Yeah, I really love this topic, and I think the way you're thinking about it is is, is thoughtful and appropriate because you know I've had so many conversations about this concept of natural because so many people really anchor into it because it 
it feels right. It feels better. It feels good. And that's sort of a cultural thing that we've developed over time. And then when you think about it, like you said, with your caffeine, or a lot of people will be like, well, I don't drink coffee. I drink tea. Okay, fine. Are you using a light bulb? Because that's not natural. Your cell phone's not natural. Like this shirt isn't natural. Yeah. You're, you're um, a cheater. And I think you're a cheater athletics, with your light bulb. Yeah, you're a cheater. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's somewhat arbitrary in where we draw the line on what does natural even mean. I mean, people who are born with genetic diseases, like that was their natural state. Should they not receive a therapy? I think they should. And then when we when we start talking about athletics, I think there's a really interesting conversation emerging. Um, certainly, you know, around steroids, I think that's interesting. But even as we as we evolve into this new era where we're more accepting of non-binary people, how do we think about how do we how do we execute sport? How do we set up competition in a way that's reflecting the diversity of people out there? And rather than saying, okay, we have like men and women. How do we place people that are transgender, for example, or you know, is it something where we're defining certain parameters of this is a competition level where your testosterone range has to be between X and Y? Because some people, women or female or male, will have like super high levels of testosterone, some will have low, and that's just kind of luck of the draw. Which you know, you can argue being athletic in general is luck of the draw, um, mm. and you know, we all have our our natural athletic abilities, or we don't. Um, and and it is to me, I agree with you, a somewhat arbitrary choice to say that you have to be limited by what you can achieve without certain classes of compounds necessarily. Mm. And again, like I'm not advocating for people to go out and take steroids or other performance enhancing drugs, but I think it's a really interesting question that we need to be thoughtful about, especially as we continue to move forward in this era where not only are we accepting of people that are that are non-gender conforming but also as we are emerging into this zone where biohacking is becoming the norm in a lot of places and not just mm-hmm. through your workout paradigms and, and nutrition paradigms but through supplements or other compounds or perhaps in the future genetic engineering you know who knows what it's going to look like or be like um I'd also make a quick plug for David Eagleman. He's a Stanford neuroscientist mm-hmm. who's done a lot of really cool work um, and talks about how we can basically extend the human senses and have more senses and, and build in extra functionality to the human body that we didn't previously have. And one example that I always loved is he was he was making this vest that would like receive sound and, and it would create a pattern on your body. So you could basically, like if you were deaf, for example, you could like hear through pressure on your body but Mm. it also just creates this kind of like this new sensory relationship between sound and touch to help you integrate into the world in a more robust way and and, you know there's also a bunch of colors we can't see so what if we can engineer an ability to be able to see more from the color spectrum or hear more like you know supposedly dogs are, are hearing at higher pitches than we can hear like i think those are all really interesting future you know possibilities for us so you can hear through sounds on your body. You said you're wearing a device, and that lets you. It's not hear the same the as hearing. So okay, it's not the same as hearing, and, and I'd, I'd urge everyone to go look it up because I'm probably bastardizing it. But from what I understood, basically, sound would be received by this this vest that was being worn, mm-hmm. and that sound would be transmuted into. Um, basically movement on the vest that you would feel on your body. And so you're not hearing through your ears, but you're, you're experiencing sound through pressure basically and and variations in pressure that can be a consistent pattern so that you could presumably understand or what that, what understand what that sound is. Hearing sound. I hope I'm not totally bastardizing that. People look it up. (laughs) It's been a long time since I read about it, but I just, it always stuck with me because I was like, that is so cool. Yeah. What a fascinating way to create a relationship with sound if you're compromised in your ability to hear sound through your ears. And, And when you think about how sound works, you know, you receive the waves of sound into your ear, into your ears, and they, they create this Mm -hmm. movement in your eardrum. Um, and so whatever the device was, it had some sort of approximation of that technology, but it brought it to another site in the body. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. As a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full uncut two plus hour episodes of the Auxoro podcast, plus gain access to two bonus episodes every month 
at auxoro.supercast.tech. Link is also in the description. Thank you so much for supporting quality content from independent creators like myself. Cheers.